got to get respire, right? Respiration, right? These, that's why when you're studying for your GRE, you learn these root words. Once you learn the root word, you can kind of figure out the definition because the definition is always going to have the root in it. And that's why you get a big list of root words, right? Now, I won't say it's 100% similar, but in a way, Arabic is very similar because the words go back to the root. So when I take taqwa back to its root, it linguistically, linguistically it means forbearance, fear, and abstinence. But it also means to guard or preserve. To guard or preserve. Wathia. It means to take something as a shield. Wathia. Right? So, linguistically it means one thing, but in religious, in a religious sense, it takes on a whole new meaning. In a religious sense, what is taqwa has to be defined by the Qur'an. So one of the questions they had was, how do you know if you have taqwa other than being a good person? Well, if I just took it out of the, 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 the realm of religion and just used the word Arabic, the Arabic word for waqiyah, you could probably apply it to different things. Even Allah in the Qur'an where he says, where Allah says, and have the proper regard for Allah through whom you ask your mutual rights and also the wombs that bore you, for Allah ever watches over you. In this ayah, Allah is telling you to have taqwa for your family relationships or to have the proper regard for your family relationships. So linguistically it can have a certain meaning. But if, we want, if we're going to understand it from the perspective of Revelation, it has a context in Revelation. And many of the places that is used in Revelation is telling us to have the proper regard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, taqwa then in the religious sense, it means to keep one's consciousness of Allah's presence and his knowledge. And it motivates us as individuals to perform righteous deeds and avoid those things which are detrimental to our development as human beings. The essence of taqwa is to take or make a shield against those things which can be damaging or detrimental to your life. So I just want you just to think for a second about your teeth. Do we have any dentists in here? For the first time in my life, I'm having dental problems. And they're very painful. And I didn't realize the value of going to the dentist every six months. Because I had some tooth decay that started in between my teeth, not on the top of my teeth. And since it started in between my teeth, I didn't see it. And I didn't know I had the tooth decay until one day I was eating some popcorn and the whole backside of my tooth just broke off. Just fell off. Right? I, I bit down and I heard like a crunch. And then I noticed that the backside of my tooth had fallen off. Well, since I wasn't taking the proper steps for dental hygiene, I wasn't conscious of the decay that was going on in my mouth. Likewise, you have to constantly be conscious of your relationship with Allah and, and, and constantly be conscious of your behavior. 
Because you have the potential to improve, but you also have the potential, the potential to retard. Laqad khalaqna insana fi ahsani taqween thumma radatnahu asfala safirin. Certainly we have made man in the best of modes, then he retards. Ahsani taqween. Ahsani. This is uh, in your SAT study. This is what's called the superlative. When you put this adif in front, ahsani. Hasan means handsome. It means beautiful. Certainly mankind was made beautiful. Now think about that child. Think about the beauty of your child. Allah has blessed me personally. I have a daughter who I've homeschooled my whole life. And she does not cuss. Alhamdulillah. She does not use any cuss words. Well, to see human innocence is a great motivation and reminder of the great value that Allah has put in every human being. But then I look at some kids in the neighborhood and they cuss so much, you would wonder if they have a, 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 a respectable a respectable vocabulary. That's because one child was exposed to circumstances that caused his regression and another child was exposed to circumstances that caused their enhancement when it comes to this particular aspect of their life. Right? So if we are aware of our relationship with God, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will be aware of certain verses in the Quran, like the one that says, uh, the soul and the order and proportion given to it. And its enlightenment to its right and its wrong, its potential for right and its potential for wrong. You see, God. If I say this, قَدْ أَفْلَهَا in Arabic, this part, and I have to do this because I know how I know how it was before I started studying Arabic. You know, when you just read the Quran in English, you miss all the powerful um, uh, spirit and expression and everything. Because you don't know what a punctuation mark is. You don't know what an exclamation point is. Can you imagine reading English without knowing what an exclamation point is? You will never know when to place emphasis on something if you're reading a sentence. So. That's what happens to you and I when we read translations. We don't get the spirit, right? And oftentimes the translation doesn't convey the strong messages. So when I say qad, qad indicates qadda. We even give it the qalqala as an emphasis, qadda, right? It means certainly, right? So what's going to happen if I drop this marker? Right? Certainly this marker is going to fall, right? So when it says kat aflaha, kat aflaha, and this is falaha, this word aflaha, you hear this word often when you, in, in another form, when you hear muflihun, right? Muflihun. They are the ones who are successful, right? You also hear when you when you hear the adhan, right? When we say Hayya Alal Falah. Right? So this is Aflaha. Now when you look this word up, right? He is successful who purifies it, the soul. And he is a loser who allows the soul to become corrupt. 
right? So look at this. This Afaha, when I look up the root word for this, just Faliha, this word, I was, I, I was researching this word not too long ago and I was reading it in an Arabic English dictionary. But it, it wasn't one of those one word Arabic English dictionaries. Often you have a one word Arabic English dictionary where it has an English word and then an the, uh, Arabic word, and they give you a one word English um, for it. But that's not how a dictionary works. You look up in a dictionary, it gives you a definition, right? We look up in the Arabic English dictionary, it gives us one word, right? So I was reading, I was looking this up in, a, in an Arabic English dictionary that gave a whole definition and not just one word. And it said that some people believe that the English word plow comes from faliha. And it was indicating that Fadiha means to turn something over. And it was saying that when you turn it over, you expose what's already in it that causes growth, right? So as I till the land, as I plow the land, as I turn the land over, I am agitating the nutrition that's already in the land, right? And as I agitate that land, it, 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 it exposes that nutrition and then whatever I have planted in the land already in the soil is the nitrates in the soil is the iron in the soil is the potassium in the soil is the zinc and the manganese and everything that's necessary for that seed that I planted in the ground to draw nourishment from the earth and grow up right and fat fatty means worker, but uh, uh, fatty hain can also mean a farmer. It can mean a farmer, right? So here, here Allah is using this beautiful parable. God Aflahab and Zakah. He is successful who purifies the soul. But how do you purify the soul? By your obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and using the tools that he has given us in the Qur'an to purify your soul, to grow your soul. Right? But if you're not aware of that relationship, if you don't have taqwa, you're going to regress and you're going to retalk because وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّهَا means that he loses, who neglects or allows the soul to become corrupts or who neglects the cultivation of his soul. So one of the questions were, how do you know if you have taqwa or if you're just a good fellow? Because there's a whole movement now, you can do good without God. And you can, but you can't cultivate your soul without God. You can't mine the gems that Allah has put in your soul for the progress of yourself as a human being without using the manual that Allah has given you to cultivate and elevate your soul called the Quran. Right? So yeah, you can do good in the world, but you can't evolve yourself. You can't build that relationship that will get you to what Allah says in the Quran. Ya ayatuha nasul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabiki radiyat mardiyya. Oh, you soul that has come to rest, return to your Lord, pleased and pleasing. You cannot get that without Allah. You cannot get that without having taqwa. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's 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 one way to know. Okay? That if you're doing good just to do good, yes, you'll do good in the world. 